Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on using CloudFront to serve dynamic content. My name is David Brown, and I am an Edge Specialized Solutions Architect for AWS. In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to configure CloudFront to serve dynamic content, or content that cannot be cached within CloudFront. Serving dynamic content over CloudFront is a very common use case for customers that are looking to lower their overall latency and accelerate delivery of requests to their applications by leveraging both CloudFront's edge locations as well as the AWS Backbone network. Our origin for this CloudFront distribution will be an application load balancer with EC2 instances running behind the application load balancer. To start, we're going to log into the AWS console. And the first thing we're going to want to do is set up our web servers that will serve as the origin for CloudFront. So we'll navigate to EC2. And then we'll go look at our running instances. For the sake of this tutorial, I've already set up two EC2 instances across two different availability zones. And both of these instances are running Nginx. Next, we're going to want to create the application load balancer. So we're going to scroll down to the load balancing section and click on load balancer. And you can see I've already created a load balancer called CloudFront Dynamic Content. I've also created a target group for this application load balancer called My Web Server. And the targets are going to be the EC2 instances that we showed earlier. If we were to actually go to the DNS name given for the application load balancer, you'll see I'm returning the instance ID as well as the current time. If I continue to refresh the page, you'll see the instance is changing as I load balance between those two EC2 instances. You can also see that the time continues to increase. The reason we're going to do this is once we configure CloudFront, we'll want to make sure that the traffic is always going back through the application load balancer and CloudFront is not caching any of the content. Let's go back into the AWS console and we'll navigate to CloudFront. We're going to want to create a new distribution. So click Create Distribution. And this is going to be a web distribution. The first thing we'll want to do is specify the origin domain name. When you click into this field, you should see a drop down. And if we scroll down, you'll find the application load balancer we created earlier. When you click on it, it will auto populate the origin ID for us. If assets on your origin server are not in the root directory, you can specify the origin path to the resources. For the sake of this tutorial, just leave that blank. If you're going to be serving HTTPS traffic from your origin, you can specify which TLS version your origin supports, as well as the HTTP protocol policy. You can also specify the origin response timeouts and keep alive timeouts. But for the sake of this tutorial, we'll leave those as the default values. You can also specify which ports to make requests over to your origin. Since we're using standard ports, we're not going to change these from port 80 or port 443. You can also specify custom header values if your origin requires them. For the sake of this tutorial, we're not going to do anything custom, so just leave those blank. Now we're getting into the default cache behavior settings. This is going to be the caching policy that our distribution is going to use. So the first thing we'll want to define is what is the viewer policy protocol? Do we want to allow users to connect to CloudFront over HTTP, HTTPS, or both? For our sake, we're going to redirect any request over HTTP to HTTPS. You can also specify which HTTP methods you want to allow. For our sake, we're not going to do any posting of data, so we're just going to leave that as the default of get and head. If you're going to be handling sensitive data, like credit card information from users, you can enable field level encryption to encrypt that sensitive data as it transits the network, and it will stay encrypted until it reaches your origin server. The next couple of fields are related to caching. 
And since we're trying to create a dynamic distribution where no caching is enabled, we'll want to adjust some of these settings. The first one we'll look at is cache based on selected request headers. This is currently set to none, which is the default value. However, if we set this to all, you'll notice that we now have this warning message telling us that all requests through CloudFront will now be passed directly to the origin. In other words, CloudFront is not going to do any caching of the objects and instead will always pass requests through to the origin. This is what we want, so we're going to leave this as all. I will note that CloudFront will always honor the cache control headers being set by your origin server. So long as your origin server is sending the correct cache control headers, CloudFront will use those headers. You'll notice I don't have the ability to adjust the TTLs since they're not needed because we're not caching anything in this particular use case. You also have the ability to forward cookies or query strings to the origin. By default, cookies and query strings are not passed to the origin. But since we're not using cookies or query strings, we'll leave this as none. We're also not doing any smooth streaming, so we can leave this as no. Nor are we going to use any signed URLs or signed cookies. Signed URLs or signed cookies are just a way to restrict access to certain content based off of access policies that you set for different assets. We can also have CloudFront compress objects automatically. We'll want to set this to yes. Generally speaking, compressing objects is something you want to do to help lower your overall egress costs, and it usually boosts performance at the same time. We're not going to be running any Lambda functions in this particular distribution, so we'll leave those as blank as well. The last section is called Distribution Settings. And this is where you can define your price class of this distribution. For this tutorial, we'll keep this as the default of use all edge locations. We're also not using a web application firewall for this distribution, so leave that as none. We also have the option to specify an alternative domain name or CNAME we want to use in conjunction with this distribution. However, because we're not setting up anything unique for this tutorial, we're going to leave it blank and just use the default cloudfront.net URL. If you do want to have CNAMES that you're using with your distribution, you can define SSL certificates for use with that distribution, and you can import those certificates directly from the AWS Certificate Manager. We'll leave the supported HTTP versions as the default too. Just know that you can disable HTTP2 if needed. If you want to enable logging, you can by clicking on, and then you can select the S3 bucket where you would like those logs to be stored. You can also define any prefix that you need in order to differentiate CloudFront logs from any other types of logs going to that same bucket. The last setting is to enable IPv6, which is on by default. And then when you're done, you just click Create Distribution. I'm not going to do that since I already have a distribution created. This is a distribution here that I created earlier. And if I were to copy this domain name and go into my browser, now you can see I'm using the cloudfront.net URL and I've been automatically redirected to the HTTPS version of my site. I'm getting my instance name as well as the current time. And as I continue to refresh this page, you can see the instances changing between the two EC2 instances in my load balancer, and the time continues to increase. This concludes our tutorial. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you.